Okay, so now we should start talking about cryptography. And in this session, we'll give a very short introduction and uh, particularly a history of cry cryptography. So we'll start uh, looking at uh, the history of cryptography and the meaning of the word and what it what we want to achieve with it. Then we'll continue with Kirchhoff's principle, uh, which is a principle that applies to, to the entire security area. And finally, we will outline uh, the, the cryptographic area to, to give a, an overview of what tools are available and uh, what we can do with them. Now, uh, the word uh, cryptography has uh, its origin in, in Greek, in the Greek language. So it comes from the, the words uh, cryptos and graphos. And cryptos simply means uh, hidden and graphos means writing. So it's hidden writing. So it's, it's how you can uh, hide your writing from from prying eyes. Now the area has been around for ages, and so for as long as people have, uh, have had uh, military organizations, then we've had some form of cryptography. Uh, so uh, it's been around for a very, very, very long time. Now, we shouldn't confuse cryptography with the area of steganography. Now, uh, steganography concerns hiding a message existence, uh, whereas uh, in cryptography, we hide the message contents. So that's quite, uh, quite a, a strong emphasis. So for instance, in cryptography, I, I make things uh, unreadable by by everyone, but they can still see it's there. So I can write uh, unreadable text on a paper, and I send it to someone, and someone who intercepts this will see that okay, there is something here that I cannot read. Uh, whereas steganography uh, concerns hiding that a message is even there. So, for instance, I uh, write the message. Uh, by tattooing it to the top of the head of uh, some messenger, and then I let the messenger grow his hair back out, and then I send him to the recipient, and anyone who, who meets this messenger, uh, they might uh, go through his messenger bag and read all the papers there, but uh, they cannot see the message because it's uh, hidden. So that illustrates the difference between the two. Now, since cryptography has had a very long history, uh, it has had some time to develop. For, for most of its existence, uh, it has been an art, but uh, now in modern times, it's a science. So in the old days, people used clever constructions and uh, they thought this to be secure. How can anyone figure this, this out? This is so insanely clever. Uh, but if we look back at history, it turns out that uh, there has always been a lot of people with a lot of time and motivation. So it, uh, this, the success of uh, these old ciphers uh, have always been limited. They've always been broken. Uh, well, most of them have been broken. Uh, there are some that are apparently not broken. They don't know the, what scheme is used, but they don't have enough uh, material to do proper cryptanalysis either. So, so then, it's, uh, then it's hard to break, of course. So, um, Kirchhoff's principle, we'll, we'll start with a quote. Uh, so Kirchhoff said that a crypto system should not require secrecy and it should not be a problem if it falls into the enemy's hands. 
Now, what uh, Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff mean uh, is that we don't want to have what is known as security by obscurity. So, uh, meaning the only reason it's secure is because uh, someone doesn't know how it works. Well, it, uh, as history has shown us, uh, people always figure out how things work, and uh, that's uh, not uh, a good base for security. No, what uh, Kirchhoff said, now this was in, in 1883, so quite some time ago, uh, he said that for, for secure cryptography, the key should be the only thing secret. So as long as uh, you have the key secret, uh, the enemy will not be able to uh, read the message. Now, by this, of course, we don't mean that we must tell the adversary what we're using, but our security should not rely on that. So even if they find out, uh, because they will, uh, we shouldn't lose any security by that. Uh, so it should entirely rest on the on the key. Uh, so that's that's the principle we have, and uh, that's uh, that's basically the principle we should uh, employ in the entire area of security. That uh, we should not base security but on obscurity that people don't know how it works. Now, uh, let's talk a bit about what the modern field uh, of cryptography looks like. Now, historically, uh, the schemes that uh, people have designed have basically been in the class of shared key systems. Now, this means that two users want to communicate and they want to encrypt their messages. They will have a shared secret and they will use this secret so one uh, so alice when she wants to send a message to say bob uh, she will use this shared secret and encrypt it uh, encrypt the message using this shared secret and then send it to bob and the bob since he knows the shared secret and which uh, uh, encryption algorithm that was used to, to encrypt it, he can use his copy of the shared secret and decrypt uh, this. So, uh, so the, the idea of, of shared key uh, things is, is, should be rather intuitive. It's, uh, it's similar to, to the idea of passwords, that's also a shared secret. Uh, so if you set a password on your computer, and that's a shared secret between you and your computer. Now, so this was in shared, shared key cryptography was uh, the only thing uh, until around the 70s when the modern era of cryptography kicked in, uh, when we uh, came up with public key cryptography. Now, this means that instead of having only one shared secret between a pair, uh, each individual, so in our example, we had Alice and Bob. Uh, with public key cryptography, Alice has two keys, uh, one public key and one private key. And Bob also has one public key and one private key. So now, and well, as the name entails, uh, the public key can be published for everyone to see so that everyone knows uh, Alice's public key and everyone knows Bob's public key. But the private key, uh, as the name entails, they, they should keep uh, to themselves. And uh, when Alice wants to send a message to Bob, she uses Bob's public key uh, to encrypt this message. And now, uh, once the message is encrypted, no one can decrypt it, not even Alice. So the only way for her to know what she sent to Bob is to keep a copy of uh, that for herself. So once it's encrypted, uh, no one can decrypt it. And then she sends this ciphertext, so the result of the encryption, to Bob. And Bob, who has the private key, the, correspond the private key corresponding to his public key, can use this one to decrypt. So only the one with the private key uh, can decrypt. 
So this has uh, solved a, a lot of uh, complex problems uh, that we had due to shared key cryptography, so key management uh, mostly. Uh, but it has also introduced a lot of uh, new things uh, that we can do. For instance, we can do digital signatures uh, thanks to public key uh, cryptography. So in the case of uh, digital signatures, it simply works the other way around. You, you use the, only the one who has the private key can issue signatures and everyone with a public key can verify these signatures. Uh, so for instance, all ele electronic identities uh, that we have, for instance, bank ID in Sweden, um, they, uh, they are based on uh, public key cryptography and, and in particular digital signatures. Uh, so around this time, so uh, the, the 70s, this is also where uh, around the time when cryptography uh, changed from, from being an art and, and turned into a science. Maybe it was slightly earlier, but uh, uh, around this time is, is where it kicked in. So, so here we started founding cryptography on, for instance, computer science. Uh, so we used the theory of computer science to uh, make sure that uh, things are secure. Now the final, uh, part, which is a rather large part, is uh, so while, while public key cryptography can be a bit counterintuitive, there are uh, much more counterintuitive things. So like from the 80s and onwards, uh, we have things like secure multi-party computations and uh, zero knowledge proofs of knowledge. So uh, in the case of zero knowledge proofs of knowledge, uh, what you can do is basically prove knowledge of something without revealing anything uh, to the other party. Uh, so, for instance, in the case of passwords, uh, well, to show that you know the password, you send the password to, well, say, your computer or a server on the internet, and then they have a copy of your password. So, by showing that you know your password, you have revealed your, your password to that party. Uh, in the case of zero knowledge proofs, uh, the analogy is that you know the password and you can convince the other party that you know the password without revealing it. Uh, now, for instance, uh, one example to show this is that, okay, you, you have your computer and you want to show a person that you know your password. So the person uh, watches you lock your computer and then he looks away and you type in your password and the computer unlocks and then the person may see and uh, uh, then the person should be rather convinced that you have, uh, that you actually know the password but you haven't revealed it. So that's a, uh, very simplified analogy for, for how zero knowledge proofs work. Uh, the other one is secure multi-party computations, uh, which means that you, you have a bunch of people who want to do a computation, uh, so evaluate a function on some input, and each person has one of these inputs, uh, but they don't want to reveal it to the others. So say that uh, you have a bunch of people who all want to compute uh, their average salary, but they don't want to reveal their salary to uh, anyone else. Now, the secure multi-party computations uh, allows them to do this. So then they allow, uh, that would allow them to get the average without any of the individual revealing uh, their particular input. So it's quite uh, useful uh, mechanisms. And there are a lot of other uh, mechanisms as well. So like commitments, so you can commit to a value uh, without revealing it and then uh, you cannot change your mind during this time and then at a later point you can reveal that, yes, this was actually what I committed to. 
So very useful tools. We will talk more about these uh, in future sessions. So that was everything for uh, this time. Thanks.